The nation has suffered a loss of once unthinkable proportions, more than one million Americans dead from COVID-19. So many around the country are mourning the loss of friends and loved ones. That toll represents one death for every 327 Americans. That's a number equal to the population of San Jose, California, the country's 10th largest city. On Thursday at the Global Pandemic Summit, President Biden marked the tragic milestone. He asked world leaders to renew their commitment to fighting the virus. There's still so much left to do. This pandemic isn't over, and with thousands still dying every day, now is the time for us to act, all of us together. He also called on Congress to provide more COVID-19 funding, but the path ahead for that aid is uncertain. Joining me tonight to discuss this and more, Manu Raju, Chief Congressional Correspondent for CNN, Sun Min Kim, she's the White House reporter for The Washington Post, and Susan Page, Washington Bureau Chief for USA Today. It's so good to see both of you, both of you at the table, and you, Manu, uh, uh, remotely, and we are so glad to have you here with us tonight. And let's start, uh, Sun Min, by talking about that, that package uh, that the White House is asking for. Remind us what exactly, how much are they asking for? And what is in that package? So when they initially put forward that request to Congress, they had, has, they had asked for more than $22 billion to cover the cost of additional therapeutics, vaccines, all of these essentials that the country needs to continue fighting this pandemic. But uh, several months ago, they were supposed to put it in this must-pass package of, in Congress to fund the government, but that got left out over disputes on how to pay for it. So now we're looking at kind of this orphan package because of protests from Republicans Republicans, that already $22 billion has been sliced by more than half. We're now talking about $10 billion. But there are a lot of other complications here, too. For example, for the, the biggest complication with that package is Republicans insisting on a vote on, um, on, re, uh, on retaining Title 42, that pandemic-era border policy that expels people at the border for public health reasons. That order is set to lift May 23rd. Um, there are some legal and judicial rulings that may change that date. But right now, Republicans are insisting on a vote. A lot of Democrats in Congress oppose the administration's plans to lift that policy. Yeah. So all of that is kind of, the COVID-80 is, is kind of getting tangled up in midterm year election politics, gotten, immigration politics. Excuse me, it's gotten very messy. Ex exactly, very much so. So Manu, uh, from the Hill perspective, I mean, it, it, they've been asking for this money, as Sunman just suggested, for some time. And here we are, and it's there's a problem. Why? Yeah, it's been actually months uh, in the making, this problem, and in large part, not just because of the disagreement over the Title 42 policy, and that, as Sungman rightly points out, that is absolutely stalling things at the moment, but also Democrats have really struggled to get their own ducks in a row. Uh, back in March, there actually was a deal for about $16 billion worth of COVID aid, and that was a deal that was cut between Nancy Pelosi, Kevin McCarthy, Mitch McConnell, and Chuck Schumer, as long, along with the top appropriators in both the House and the Senate and the Republican and Democratic side. They were going to let, they're going to roll that into a massive package to fund the government. But Democrats in the rank and file in the House rebelled. They revolted over it because Republicans had insisted that that $16 billion be offset with spending cuts. And there were concerns among some of the Democrats about where those cuts were coming from, where those offsets were coming from. Some of them would have come from their own states, from unused COVID money that they believe that were obligated to their states, and they pushed back. And that essentially forced Pelosi, who essentially did not have the votes to pass that massive government spending bill out of the House, she had to nix that $16 billion package altogether. And as a result, things have been stalled for some time. And there was that deal that was cut in the Senate for a smaller package, $10 billion between the Republicans and Democrats. They got rid of international COVID aid, dealing with how to deal with this on the global level. They had to get rid of that in order to get a deal with Republicans to fully pay for it, to offset the cost of this package. But then that $10 billion, as, as Sungman pointed out, got wrapped into the election year politics of dealing with how to target that Title 42 policy at the border. Now, Republicans are insisting on an amendment and an amendment dealing with 
Title 42 as part of the COVID package. Chuck Schumer, the majority leader, has resisted that, but he is facing increased pressure from top Democrats, including ones who are up for re-election, including the number two Democrat, his dep chief deputy, Dick Durbin, who told me this week that it is inevitable that they'll ultimately have to cave to Republican demands. So it seems like eventually they're going to have to give Republicans a vote. Potentially they can get this through. But still, when they get this through, Judy, that's only going to be $10 billion of the $22.5 billion that the White House proposed. And it's unclear if that'll be enough to deal with the concerns about the uh, surge in uh, cases that could occur in the months ahead. I mean, it just gives you a headache trying to keep right. track of all the, the ins and outs of this. But Susan, from your perspective, does it look like there's a solution here? Well, I, I don't think we know. I don't think it's perfectly clear that there'll finally be a deal. Six months before November, Republicans do not feel a great imperative to do anything that lets Democrats out of the box that they're in on, on this. Uh, and, you know, the one thing, one, one reason I think Americans hate politics is you listen to all these back and forth about unrelated issues, but this was going to have real life consequences for Americans if this money is, is not approved. The administration says that fact, it'll be harder to update vaccines to deal with new variants, that they may have to restrict who can get the new vaccines to those who are most vulnerable. I mean, that's like a, a way, the way back machine when you had to be on a certain list to get the, the initial vaccines that came out. Uh, so so not, it's not just a, it's not a fight with shadow puppets. This is something that's going to affect Americans uh, across the country as we go into the fall and winter when we expect to have another surge of COVID. Which, which brings us back, or me back, uh, uh, Sun Min, to the question of, is the White House thinking about how the American people see COVID right now? I mean, we now, there are a lot of cases out there. Now, they tend to be mild. Right. But it's not that COVID has gone away. It's still there. Right. It's been a really big challenge for the White House for months now, if not over a year, because we see how much the public, I mean, we're tired of COVID. We all kind of want to move on and try to resume a sense of normalcy. And the White House has tried to project that in as many ways as possible. You know, last year they lifted the mask mandate, uh, some experts say perhaps too prematurely. And they hadn't really resisted when, uh, when a federal judge knocked down that federal uh, transportation mask mandate um, a few weeks ago. But they also know at the same time that, look, the pandemic is still with us. Infections are still going to be high, even though with vaccines, hospital ser uh, serious uh, or hospitalization, hospitalization and death may not be as prevalent. They still have to, sh they still need the tools to fight a pandemic that is still ongoing. So it's a really tough balancing act for the White House that they've been dealing with for some time with a weary public, but a reality that is still where, a reality where the pandemic is still very much with us. And, and Manu, again, from the Hill perspective, is it that the Democratic members are feeling uh, the, the, the need for COVID and Republicans aren't? I mean, that's almost too simplistic, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Look, it is a much different situation than we were back in 2020. Remember, at that time, it was almost a blank check, even in uh, 2021 to some extent, but mostly in 2020, a blank check that Congress was writing for dealing with the COVID response. There were no concerns about offsetting the costs and, and, and not uh, increasing the budget deficit in the process. That was not even a discussion. In fact, during the Trump time, uh, at the end of the Trump era, they were saying, we don't really care about deficits and debt. We care about dealing with the pandemic. That has changed. The politics have changed. The concerns have changed. And the party's approaches have changed. And that has made things much more complicated on the Hill because the Republicans are insisting on offsetting the cost of any new money dealing with COVID. And as a result, that has created extra complications. And remember, that that first package, the first package that they passed in the in Biden, under Biden, roughly $2 trillion, that was passed with strictly Democratic support. That was supposed to be dealing with the pandemic, but the Republicans disagreed with that approach. So it has been, under the Biden era, a much more partisan fight over additional money to deal with the pandemic, which has made things more complicated. But Democrats themselves have their own issues to deal with. But but the question is here, Judy, is that going to be enough to deal with this? And then if, if the White House Cosmetics says we need more money in the fall, can they get that together by the time of the midterms? Also another complicating factor here. And, and Susan, I hear you saying that for the Republicans, they just aren't hearing the imperative mm -hmm. from their voters, from the people they answer to, uh, to do something here. 
And one of the, there's been a several strange things about the COVID pandemic that we've that we've seen, and one of them has been that it's become a partisan split. Yeah. And Republicans, uh, Republican voters, Republican legislators, and office holders have been much uh, have taken a different attitude toward the COVID pandemic than Democrats have. They've been much uh, less willing to take vaccines. They've been less willing to agree with mask mandates. Uh, and there are probably a lot of reasons why that's happened, but it persists today. And that's when reasons become a, a, not a medical science issue. This has become very much a partisan political issue. Which makes it even harder, Sun Min, uh, for the White House, you know, getting back to what you were saying earlier about their need to connect what they're asking for with what they see the American people. Uh, need at this point. Right, very much so. And they're just also dealing with an uphill dynamic in the Senate. I mean, 10 Republican votes in the Senate for an administration priority, even if it's something that's seemingly um, nonpartisan as COVID aid, is going to be a challenge, has definitely been a challenge. And just that dynamic, sort of the congressional split, has been such a big hurdle for the administration and so many other issues, and certainly is one here.